Okay, so we've arrived at the registration table. Okay. This is the first step in our vaccine clinic. Mm -hmm. At the registration table today, we have John, a Medical Reserve Corps volunteer. We do, however, recommend that you utilize school personnel to man this table so that the child and the student and the parent feel comfortable when they arrive at this step. The register at the table will be in charge of the consent forms, making sure that there are no contraindications mm -hmm. marked on the student's consent form and that the child feels okay today and a sense to receive the vaccine. Excellent. Yes, the contraindications are very few with the influenza vaccine. It's no different from the other seasonal influenza vaccines that the child has received. Most importantly, you want to make sure that the child has never had any severe reaction to an influenza vaccine before, a severe allergic reaction or a neurological problem soon after an influenza vaccine in the past. Also things to just check with or to make sure the child does not have an egg allergy or a gelatin allergy. In those situations, it's sometimes okay to still give the vaccine, but you wanna make sure with the physician ahead of time that it's okay for this particular student. Right, and the contraindications are indicated right there on the consent form, so it's easy to identify if one is checked off or not. So that's great. And from the registration table, then the child, the student, would be escorted over to the vaccination station. Okay, so we've arrived at the vaccination table. So here we have a setup of what the vaccination stations will look like at your school. The Medical Reserve Corps volunteers that are going to be the vaccinators at your school will have set this up. This is our responsibility and not yours. As you can see on the table, we have gloves, Perel, an anaphylaxic emergency kit, band-aids, sharps containers, alcohol wipes, and band-aids. So this Excellent. is the... This is the equipment that we use at the vaccination table. Each will be set up just like this at every school. Again, the MRC will do this themselves. So over here I have Sheila Shanley, registered nurse, and Lori Cutting, registered nurse. They have agreed today to participate so that we can show you what will happen when the student arrives at a vaccination table. Today, Lori will be the student. So Sheila will roll up Lori's sleeve for her. She will put gloves on first, and then she will roll up Lori's sleeve in the area in which we will give the vaccine, which is the arm, the upper arm. That's why it's important for students to wear short sleeves Absolutely. to make this easier during the day. Absolutely. We really recommend that you tell your students to wear short sleeves even under a sweater on the day of the vaccination clinic. So Sheila's preparing her materials in order to to give the vaccination, a Band-Aid, a two by two, and an alcohol swab. Sheila's checking the needle. Now Sheila will swab the area, check for the area, and then swab the area where the vaccine will go in on the student. The student here will feel a little pinch with the injection, however, it's not too bad. The shot has been given. The needle goes into the sharps containers, which the MRC will have. Pressure is put on the injection site, and then a Band-Aid is placed over that. Excellent. Yes. Very so once easy. the student is finished, then they will be escorted from here over to the observation area. The CDC recommends that a student be observed for 15 minutes after each injection. And we will go over to that station next. So Dr. Alexander, we've made it to the observation area. Yes. After the student receives their vaccine, they're escorted over to an observation area where we have set up over here. Simple chairs, enough for as many students as you will be vaccinating is appropriate. In this area, we will have John Fauscher, who is an EMT, will be observing the children after their shots. Here we're looking for what we spoke about earlier, for any type of reaction to the injection site, so on and so forth. Any adverse reactions. We don't expect them, exactly. but we're going to be observing for them. Exactly. So this is recommended by the CDC and we're following those guidelines. Yes, as you mentioned, they're required to stay here for 15 minutes. Some students may feel fine and not want to stay for the 15 minutes providing juice or whatever other activities, but it's important to make sure that they rest and are observed for that amount of time by our qualified EMT and Medical Reserve Corps personnel. The adverse reactions that we're watching for are nothing of significance, but can include some soreness at the injection site, 
and some redness in the area. Those are most common if they happen at all. What is even more rare is if students can have a fever-like feeling, they may feel nauseous, or may feel lightheaded, and um, even less commonly than that, some students may have other um, problems that would require closer monitoring. We don't expect that to happen at all, but John is here and the other Medical Reserve Corps volunteers are here to make sure that that doesn't happen. Right, and what you will see on our table here too is we have advanced life support equipment with us for every clinic, for every school. We will provide this and advanced life support personnel to man the area just in case. We don't expect, but we plan for the worst and hope for the best. Thank you to Erin, and thank you to the Medical Reserve Corps volunteers. As we mentioned today, we've described for you what should go on in best preparing for your vaccine school clinics. You want to make sure that you receive the packet, the school kit appropriately, and that you go through the instructions appropriately. Do what's necessary to begin to prepare immediately. Begin to prepare one week before your vaccine clinic starts. Prepare three days before your vaccine clinic starts and what to do one day and the day of your vaccine clinic. We've also spoken about what to do to set up for your vaccine clinic. There should be a registration area where your school employee welcomes the student and or the parent in the evening when the parents are there. Then there is the vaccination area where we met the Medical Reserve Corps volunteers who are dedicated and will be here to vaccinate the children and the students. And then we talked about the observation area. And that's where we will have medically qualified personnel watching the students to make sure that there is no problem. We don't anticipate that any problem will occur because this vaccine is no different from the seasonal flu vaccine that we receive every year. We want to thank everyone for volunteering. Make sure that as you set up your vaccine clinics, you know that students and parents start in one area, there's a unidirectional flow, and the exit is separate from where they came in. The work that you do to vaccinate these students will be vital. We appreciate your dedication and your willingness to make sure that all of our students are as protected as possible. Hello, I'm Deborah Gist, Rhode Island Commissioner of Education, and I want to thank you so much for your participation in this training video. We at the Department of Education have been so grateful to have been able to work with the Department of Health, the Medical Reserve Corps, and the Wellness Company, because we all share one goal, and that goal is to make sure that our children are staying safe and healthy throughout this H1N1 influenza season. And your participation in planning your H1N1 uh, vaccination clinic at your school is a vital link to creating the safe and healthy environments in our school settings. If we all do our part, we can make sure that students stay healthy and then they stay in class. And then we keep schools open and all across the state our students are, are learning and, and successfully experiencing another school year. We hope that you found this video training helpful. And I want to thank you so much for your commitment to this effort in keeping our students safe. Thank you.